Greetings, fellow Earthlings. Uh, I'm Jeff Goldblum. Thank you. Uh, hey, you ever hear of Area 51? Well, it's that secret place where uh, recovered aliens and their craft are supposedly being held by the government. Uh, well, they say that Area 51 doesn't really exist. But they say that about Area ID4, too. And look where we are. Uh-huh. It's Area ID4. This seemingly desolate building is actually burgeoning with activity, secret activity, that they're trying to keep from us. See, there's a whole wealth of information that if uh, uncovered would reveal to us the secrets behind one of this summer's uh, most exciting and biggest movies, Independence Day. Watch this. See what I mean? It's not gonna stop us. Okay, time for some good honest labor, huh? Okay, we're in. No civilians ever gotten this far before. Uh, very soon we should be coming face to face with the central question in Independence Day. Are we alone? Do you know what CGI is? Uh, no. I believe in the idea that there is something out there. There's got to be other life out there. I can't imagine we're the only ones. The size of the universe and the probability is such that there's probably something out there. I just think it would be really arrogant of us humans to think that we are the only beings that exist in this massive universe. I have to say, when enough people scream fire, you got to look for smoke. What if, tomorrow morning, we were to wake up to discover enormous spaceships 15 miles wide hovering over the 30 biggest cities of the world? There's going to be a lot of frightened people out there. Yeah. I'm one of them. this uh, elevator door opens, we're going to come upon a room where some of the stars of Independence Day have been sequestered, believe it or not, forced to keep silent about their roles in the film. Uh, let's see if uh, maybe we can put an end to this gag order and uh, get some of my co-stars to tell us what the movie's about. Ready? Fight the power. This movie is about aliens coming to take over the world. It has a diameter of over 550 kilometers and a mass roughly one-fourth the size of our moon. What the hell is it? A meteor? No, sir. No, definitely not. How do you know? Well, sir, it's slowing down. It's what? There is something out there which could destroy the Earth. Part of it is broken off into nearly three dozen other pieces. They should be entering our atmosphere within the next 25 minutes. It releases 15 mile wide ships that hover over all of the major cities around the world. Aren't you coming, David? No, I gotta see it. This is a big emergency crisis situation. Uh, you know, like a building on fire, or, or except time is 10 billion. We have to ask you to try to stay calm, and it's important for everyone not to panic. I play Dave Levinson. Oh my God. I'm the one who discovers some things about when they're going to attack. See? 
They're positioning themselves all over the world using this one signal to synchronize their efforts in approximately six hours. The signal's going to disappear and the countdown's going to be over. And then what? Checkmate. I play President Thomas J. Whitmore, and in the course of events, he manages to kind of be quite a leader. A historic and unprecedented event has occurred. The question of whether or not we are alone in the universe has been answered. And what happens if they do become hostile? And God help us. We're all up! Oh, God, I hope they bring back Elvis! We've got to stop them! They're going to kill us all! Time's up. They destroy big cities all over the world and then threaten to destroy everybody. All hell just breaks loose, and uh, I run from the walls of destruction. The plan is to rub everybody out by July 4th, so we have to mobilize. We will not vanish without a fight. We're going to live on. We're going to survive. They run into the United States Marine Corps, namely Captain Stephen Hiller. That's played by me. You scared, man. No. Something you want to add to this briefing, Captain Hiller? No, sir. Just a little anxious to get up there and whoop E.T.'s ass, that's all. <laughs> you get your chance. You'll all get your chance. Dismissed! Yeah. Let's kick the tires and light the fires. I play Jimmy Wilder. They call upon him and a whole bunch of other guys to knock out this alien spaceship. I got you covered, Big Daddy. Nice move, nice move. In this movie is Bill Pullman and Jeff Goldblum and Randy Quaid and Judd Hirsch and the list goes on and on and on. Mary McDonald and Will Smith and uh, Margaret Collin, uh, Harry Connick Jr. and Harvey Fierstein. You know, it's got a very interesting cast. We kind of tried in the whole movie for every part, you know, to find the perfect actor for it and try to make the whole cast very balanced. Cut! And, uh, Roland really has pulled together a very fine group of actors for this piece. It's a top draw cast. In any given scene, there, you know, might be collectively 150 years of film experience. The beginning of the point that you all three kind of for a moment concentrate on death. You have this massive cast, and when the movie starts, you don't know who's going to still be around at the end of the movie. We wanted to have this feeling that every character is equally important, so in phase of disaster, every one of them could die. For the audience, it will be a big loss. Get out of there! Okay. Now we're cooking, now we're getting someplace. But to get the real information, the real story, you got to go to the source, the filmmakers, Roland Emmerich and Dean Devlin. Maybe you know them as the creative forces behind that movie Stargate? We're about to uncover the monumental challenges that they faced while making Independence Day. Oh, there we go. They told me you'd be coming gold blind. Oh, camera, are you, are you nuts? Your, they told you not to reveal any secrets. We shot over six thousand elements to make up over 400 visual effect shots. We've had models, a pyro unit, two motion control units, and at various times there's been additional model units. There's more miniatures in this movie than probably any two movies combined. There's cities to build, there's alien craft, alien creatures, it just runs the whole gamut. There was also an enormous amount of on-set effects with enormous explosions and car crashes. I know in one day alone in New York we crashed 23 cars. Oh! 
our film does everything from the highest tech, digitally animated, digitally composite CGI shot to little models on wires in front of photo backings. And everything in between. It goes from great exterior locations. We shot on the Bonneville Salt Flats with spectacular views where we had 170 trailers racing across the desert to these enormous sets that we built here at the Hughes Aircraft. She's a beaut, ain't she? We decided to have our alien to show up and make a hell of an entrance. There's a lot of challenges in this kind of movie, and Roland and Dean are very good at understanding what's going on, having an internal rhythm above all these scenes. See, Roland and Dean, I can't separate them. They just, between the two of them, covered all the bases. Roland Emmerich, as a director, is an incredibly rare breed in Hollywood. He has unbounding energy and loves making movies. Can you open this, this, this window here? I would try to make a movie which is entertaining and as uh, diverse as possible. There must be really a moment, you know, where you're like... Roland is the film. He knows everything about the plot. He knows everything about every special effect. He knows an awful lot about movie making, and he shares it with such ease. When you're on the set, you can feel his passion and his involvement, and it's infectious. You come to him, and it's more like, does anybody hear you? Yeah. Oh, nice, nice. He lays the base for you of what he wants clearly enough that you can use that as a springboard to bring he and Dean's words to life. He's very concerned with, with detail and is very much in command of his art. This direction was great, right? but he should come a little bit closer to that. Yeah. Roland is a notorious location scouter. He'll usually see 30 different locations before he chooses one he likes. Not only is he trying to choose something that has a very special look, because he, he is a very visual director, but he also has to find locations that will work with the special effects. I saw Stargate and the type of things that, that they wanted to do. And, you know, this is a classic, big-budget Hollywood picture. You have thrills, chills, spills. And the special effects, the level of the special effects in this film, I mean, huge. Almost every scene is kind of built to, like, send the ball out of the park. It's going to be quite an assault on our senses, kind of like a roller coaster. Frame after frame after frame. You won't find a film that has more on screen than this film. And that's what we're most proud of. The money spent on this movie is on the screen. You see it. <sighs> okay. I think this is a good place to start to... Uh blow the cover off of some of the tricks behind Independence Day's extravaganza of special effects, which are guaranteed to make your jaw drop. Oh, models. Close shot of this, please. Get in there. Look at that. See that? I think when you do a special effect movie, I think you should do something which, first of all, you have to go to the limits of what uh, technology can do, and you have to create sequences that people haven't seen. We have alien spaceships above Los Angeles and some other major cities. So pretty. These uh, spaceships have a heat ray. The heat ray comes out from the middle and spreads out toward the edges of the city. We have uh, different streets where we see this huge wall of flames coming towards us. And when you look down the street, you wonder that the fire comes right at you. But fire wants to go up, especially like uh, when you do it in a miniature. So what we had to do is we had to build streets and objects upright. The, the street had to become pretty much a chimney for the fire. Our miniature, it's 24 scale, it's about 8 feet wide, 20 feet long. It's hanging on a scaffolding at about a 10 degree angle. So when we have our destruction and our fire and everything start here, it will run up the street as it eats up the fuel. And our camera will be mounted about 5 feet off the set. A very important issue is the detail of the model itself. Even if we only see it for a couple of seconds, it's always totally important to have the detail from bottom to top 
all the signs, all the telephone poles, all the street lights, parking meters. It basically has everything on it. We really have to be careful that the best detail is directly in front of the camera. The fireball was only one element, and then we kind of did all the interactive things. We'll shoot a blue screen that will be air cannons and stuff, like a concussion wave hitting them, then we'll shoot debris, and then we'll do some live action stuff and some people in it. The people are running away from the wall of destruction. Cars have been picked up in the uh, concussion wave and been flung far forward. All right, stand by. Pictures up, please. And let's start the smoke, please, and the wind. And roll it, please. Right now we have six units shooting, and we're all shooting like the similar shots. Model Unit 1 shot the city street. Model Unit 2 shot the pyro and the fire coming through. Motion control is adding the element of the spaceship above, and then I shoot the blue screen people running in the foreground. We all always get together and talk about lighting and making sure we match everything. So it is very complicated, uh, but if you get it right, it looks fantastic. It's around here somewhere. Enter security code. Uh, yep, tight security. Uh, listen, guys, um, you know, when it comes to uh, blowing up the world on Independence Day, uh, nothing's off limits. The same thing here, except for this. Just wait out here. I'll be one minute. Today we are doing the explosion of the White House. This model probably costs in excess of $50,000. I get one shot at it. There's a great many variables that go into the completion and the successful blowing of a model like this. One has to consider what the model is made out of, in this case, plaster. You have to know the scale. You have to know the size of the charges that you're using, how much gas, what the camera speeds are. Mike Joyce and his team of geniuses sat down and built this unbelievable replica of the White House. We're building that at 12 scale, which is over 14 feet wide, and we're going to blow it up, and it'll look tremendous when it goes. This had to be a world-class product because all the cameras that we're setting up around here are within 10 feet of, of, of this particular model. And even though it's an existing piece of architecture, there are still things that have to be you know, artistically rendered before it even gets to the model shop. Then the model shop takes all of those blueprints like you're really building a real house, and then they have to manufacture all of that. We put a lot of thinking into that. Everything was a mold, so every piece was built like the White House was built out of single pieces. The important factor is to make sure that you have a lot of information on film, so you want to make it as slow as possible. The normal camera speed would be 24 frames per second. It's one second of film. We're shooting tonight with 300 frames per second. So that means when the actual explosion takes place, you're slowing it down 12 times. The whole thing looks 12 times slower in the end. Even though you're shooting 300 frames per second, if I was to use something like dynamite, you would have maybe two frames of explosion and that's it. You want to blow it up in stages and you want to see the pieces and debris flying out of there. Everything will be falling in front of the camera or jetting out the sides. And all the camera crews are going to be unmanned and everybody is in a safe position. Let's clear, please. When you start to come down to that 10 minute mark, Everybody's very concerned because, of course, there's hundreds and hundreds of hours, tens of thousands of dollars, and what we really want to do is make sure that we just don't stub our toe at the last moment. We really only want to do this once. Roll cameras. Roll cameras, please. Hey! Hey! And action! Woo! 
to be everything that I expected it to be, and uh, everything went off. We didn't have any problems. The timing was right. The debris was right. The fireball was perfect. And this is what's left of it. <laughs> okay. Now, if it isn't scaled down or blown up when it comes to special effects in Independence Day, it's probably going to be CGI, computer-generated image. Want to see how that's done? Okay. Blowing up the White House was something that one wouldn't want to do practically, so we figure out how to do that as a visual effect and how to creatively put it together in the computers. If you could actually go blow up the White House, it, we wouldn't need to do compositing, but since we don't want to really do that, we have a model and we have all these elements. My job on this particular shot was to add a model destroyer in the sky and a beam coming down from the ship with particles and it strikes the top of the White House as the uh, actual model is exploding. <laughs> really two distinct fields of visual effects. One is compositing, the other is CGI, computer-generated imagery. The difference between the two is compositing, you're putting the elements together, and CGI, you're actually generating elements. The same way if you were shooting an element, you're actually creating something that didn't exist before. One of the beauties of compositing is that uh, rather than trying to do everything in camera, trying to do everything live, where you would have to have a model, you'd have to have a spaceship to scale, you'd have to have pyro, and all of that happening at the same time, by compositing in layers, it allows us to choreograph each layer perfectly and then put them together. And it's really all about having control of each element as it goes together. The director's dreams can come true in a way that he can watch it happen on the screen. The aliens and the F-18s engage in the largest air battle in history, and we needed to put that on the screen. Modern leaders, your major maneuver. It's the Independence Day CG department that we set up specifically for the show. Computer graphics is the 3D environment used in digital effects, and these animators are here doing all the, the computer graphics. Uh, we have an additional company called Vision Art that's also doing some of the graphics for us as well. Uh, on this show, we had uh, several sets of challenges. One of the biggest ones was the dogfight scenes. We're animating hundreds of airplanes in the air at the same time. To do that plane by plane is just a really painstaking process. It takes a really long time. So you have to do not only each F-18 for each attacker, but then each attacker shoots and each F-18 fires missiles and tracers. You've got literally thousands of things to keep track of in the scene. Since we're doing this all with computers, computers are really good at simulating all those things. So we've written programs which do nothing but simulate the dogfight scenes in a, in a way that we have a lot of control over them. Because there's a limited amount of horsepower in the computer, we have to use primitives or these little dots to represent each of the airplanes at first. What you're seeing right now is white dots for each of the F-18s and red dots for each of the alien attackers. It's only stepping a few frames per second. It's only stepping very slowly through the dogfight, and that's so we can tweak each of the individual parameters. As soon as I get the motion the way I want it, as soon as I get the numbers the way that we want it for a particular shot, then I can go in and substitute the real airplanes for these dots. Our representation of a solid object we call a wireframe, and how you get there basically are points in space. You can set points here in this uh, 3D virtual environment and from that you can go up higher and higher and end up having a real complex model which we call a wireframe because it looks like uh, consisting of a lot of wire. The beauty of the wireframe is once it's built we can use it for any shot. You can put the F-18 flying straight towards you and we in the computer have what's basically a virtual camera and you can put the camera in the front of, of this 3D object and it looks like it's flying towards you. If you want to go to the side, you get the wings and you can show the rotation. You then need to take a real surface and, and basically paint it over top of this texture. And what we do is get actual pictures from all different angles and scan that into the computer so it's then digitized and then took that and wrapped that around these wireframes. The goal is always to be photorealistic. The director very much wanted it to look real and so that's been our, our task. You know, maybe the most thrilling aspect of the movie, besides the explosions and the fine acting and the stunts and the fine acting, um, is the possibility that one day soon all of us Earthlings can uh, unite for the common good and find a way to get along. Imagine that.
What happened, Mommy? I don't know, baby. If there were an outside aggressor, an alien invasion, wouldn't everybody on this planet forget their petty differences and concentrate more on what binds us together, the fact that we are all one race, human? Independence Day is an attempt to express that. I think the core theme is uh, how different people come together in the face of a disaster. Hold on, everybody! Hold on! People from completely different backgrounds all come together and, you know, unite to preserve the human race. You will be launching the largest aerial battle in the history of mankind. Mankind, that word should have new meaning for all of us today. We all wake up to our best selves in a way and our humanity and our sense of brotherhood and uh, ability to work together. It's been a pleasure. Steve, you too. We learned a lot about this in Los Angeles in the last couple of years between the fires and the riots and the earthquakes and the floods and we saw how people really came together and we wanted to try and show that on a global level. Disparate people from disparate backgrounds coming together in an unlikely way. It's about human beings. It's about being a human being. It doesn't matter how great your country is or how great you might be. The bottom line is all we really are are human beings. Are you scared? Me too. It is only the care and the courage of each individual involved that creates the possibility for further life. And everybody gets a chance to be a hero for a little while. You know how I'm like I'm always trying to save the planet? There's my chance. There's a lot of attitude in this movie. And, and sometimes it's fun to go see a movie where a lot of characters have a lot of attitude. Yeah! Yeah! The 4th of July will no longer be known as an American holiday. But as the day when the world declared in one voice, we will not go quietly into the night, today we celebrate our Independence Day. Well, there you have it. Our first hand look inside Area ID4, a building uh, that supposedly doesn't exist which contains long-held movie-making secrets finally revealed to you, the public. Good night, my friends. Thank you. Uh, this is where they keep space. Good luck. Hey there, it's Lisa with some cool action movie trivia. In the scene where Will Smith is dragging an unconscious alien across the desert in Independence Day, his famous line, and what the hell is that smell, was unscripted. He was actually complaining about the smell of rotting shrimp coming from the Great Salt Lake of Utah that they were shooting near. Hmm. Now remember to click here below to subscribe or on the side for more great content.